Phil the Bruce Company is here to take your plant and garden questions. 270-9933. This is a ray of sunshine on this gloomy day. Well, when I was picking out plants, there was a lady that came in and she said she took down her Christmas tree and now she has all this room for plants. <laughs> so this this is a pretty um Tromantha has a, a totally different color on the underside of the leaves. Tropical, just sort of like the uh, bromeliad next to it over here. And if you are have a problem growing plants, this is an easy one because you just keep water in the little cup. You don't even have to mm. worry about watering the soil necessarily. And then I have a fern that looks like it's real delicate, but it's not. It's a lemon button fern, and it's really just quite tough. And then, of course, the cute little dwarf orchid. And there's an array of things. I've got I have lavender and this little the, the share bee plant. All right, let's go to the calls. We'll start with Jeff in Loganville. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Hi, what's your question? My question is, um, I have a about half a dozen very old uh, Christmas cactuses, uh -huh. and they didn't have any flowers this year. That, that's I, maybe it was because we just had such a really dreary, dark season at, at, in the fall. Because I've heard that from quite a few people this season. Do you keep them inside all year round, Jeff? Oh, he must be gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have pretty good luck, by, but sometimes when those are old, big cactus, they don't, it's not easy to transport them. But if they're smaller, I like to move them outside during the summer and before danger of frost, then bring them in. Then they seem to set buds. In full sun? Uh, not in full sun. Yeah. You've got to have, uh, east light is good, or the shade of a, uh, some sort of shade tree would be yeah, good, because otherwise they'll burn. Yeah, because that'd be quite a shock going yes. from the inside out. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's go to Doris in Prairie du Sac. Hi, Doris. Hi, I have an armorellus that is getting taller and taller, <laughs> and it doesn't flower. What's going on with that? Well, as long as the flower um, stalk is developing, then it, it will develop flowers eventually. Um, sometimes people, if they don't buy a good-sized bulb, then you just get leaves and you don't get a flower. So you want a bigger bulb? A larger bulb is critical with amaryllis, yeah. Okay. And uh, all this rain this time of year, is this causing some problems for our plants or not? Oh, well, you know, there's 50 degrees. I'm glad that it's going to be sort of gradual with the cool, cool on because since it doesn't have any kind of protective, and ice is really bad for plants. Ice around the crown of, of plants can be de detrimental. So we'll see. Yeah, we plant, just plants like to be covered in snow. I mean, that's the natural thing around here. Snow is a really good insulation, and ice when that eliminates oxygen, and then that combined with the, the ice layer can, can actually cause the deaths of some plants. But hopefully we have a gradual cool down, and we don't have as many problems. Yeah. All right, let's go to Mike now in Portage. Hi, Mike. Yes, a couple of weeks ago I called and asked about cutting box elder trees and elm trees down along my garden to kill them, and you said to treat them as the sap was going down, but I didn't catch what you said to treat it with to kill them stumps with. Okay. Uh, well, then, up, Thank you. Okay. Since, since you've cut it for a while ago, then that then the cells will have closed up, so there's no point in painting any of this material on there. Next spring when you start to see suckering coming off the side, then make a fresh cut and have this brush killer. It's a, it's a chemical that will be taken up by the by the plant and translocate it down to the roots and cause it to die. Okay, so nothing really can do now. Not at this point, no. All right, let's go to John. Hi, John, what's your question? Uh, I just moved into a house in Adams, and I'm wondering what side of my yard I should be preparing um, for a garden. All right, if you, this is a vegetable garden, John, correct? Yep. Okay, vegetable gardens you want is full sun if possible. So if you are going to be putting it up next to the foundation, um, then it should be on the south side. But ideally, you'd move it away from the home and where you can get sun growing all around it. You're going to find that the things are going to perform much better. But depending upon the size, you know, think that there are certain plants that don't need as much sun. Lettuce is not a real... But most vegetables like full sun. Yeah, absolutely, to be the best performing. So mm -hmm. the south side of your house mm -hmm. is the answer. Yes. Yes. All right, let's go to Kelly in Madison. Hi, Kelly. Good. What's your question? Um, I have a lemon and lime tree, and it was blossoming, and then it did produce some very small limes, but now it seems like it's gone dormant, and I just wondered if that was a normal um, growth pattern that they have. When you say dormant, what do you mean? Is it, it's well, just not flowering it's anymore? it's not blossoming, and it's lost leaves. 
Oh, all right. Well, see, it is a tropical plant, and again, that's going to require as much sunlight as you can give, give it. So south window at this time of the year, or ideally, if you have a sunroom, that would be much better. And um, dropping foliage, you also check for insects. That, that sometimes it can be a problem with, with citrus inside. Yeah, I, I started one of those from a seed, too, and I had trouble with spiders. Spider mites? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, it's, you know, this is not Florida. No, it's not. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly know that. Let's go to Paul now in McFarland. Hi, Paul. Hi there. Hi. Which question? We have a peace lily, and we want to know why it n never blossoms. Well, again, I think that that's a plant that you're going to have to fertilize it on a periodic basis if you're going to get it to flower. I know Mark, he's, yeah, he's don't ask, amazing. Don't follow my lead. Well, he doesn't overwater. That's one of the things that I think is very critical. But peace lilies, if you don't water enough, then they're going to wilt. So it's, it's a little bit touchy, but do some fertilization and probably wait till um, February, March to do that. Do they, do they be root bound or? They do prefer to be root bound in order to develop, develop flowers. All yes. right, let's go to, we have time for one more. Let's go to Lois in Waterloo. Hi, Lois. Hi. Hi, what's your question? I have a question about the plant that she has there on stage today with the, okay, with which the red and green leaves. Okay, Mr. Stramantha, all right. Okay, mine is, the leaves are drying. What's causing them to dry? Well, with the lower ones, we'll do that over time because it's growing. These plants are tropical, so that means that they would really like a lot of humidity and great sunlight and moisture. So we bring them in, into our homes, and we have a heater on, and air is dry. So the browning leaves, just cut those off. It will come with new growth, especially next, next summer. Next summer. <laughs> all right, we're out of time. Thank you all for calling in. Thank you, Linda. You're welcome. We'll see you next week.